Number 10, Rose McGowan. So let's talk about the show Charmed for a second, a solid series that was on air for basically 10 years. The series followed three sisters that discovered they are descendants of a long line of good female witches and are destined to fight against the forces of evil. Yes, it was a very fun show, however, just because you play sisters on set does not mean that you're always going to be close in real life. Rose McGowan and Alyssa Milano had a very public altercation that resulted in a little incident on set being shared with the world. Rose claimed that Alyssa threw a fit in front of the crew, yelling, they don't pay me enough to do this stuff, only she didn't say stuff. She called Alyssa's behavior appalling, claiming she cried every time that the show got renewed for another season, because it just meant more time on a toxic set. Alyssa never shared her comments on the situation, confirming what she was being accused of. Number 9, Richard Gere. Richard Gere is one of those actors that doesn't really act. Sometimes people just get hired for films because they have a face for it or the style. For Richard, he did not have enough class in Moxie to keep a handle on his role in the film Lords of the Flatbush. He was casted to star line Rocky himself, Sylvester Stallone, and according to Sly, the two didn't get along at all. Their beef was strong and long lasting throughout the entire production until it finally came to a head one day when Richard was a bit too into one scene and he actually grabbed Sylvester pretty aggressively by the collar. When Sly told him to lay off, he laid in instead. The scene was being filmed on Coney Island and when the actors took a minute to take a break, they tried to break each other. Sly was eating a hot dog alone in his car, which sounds pretty peaceful, and suddenly Richard stormed in, joined him with half of a chicken dripping in mustard, and despite his warnings about the mustard, seriously, it dripped all over his pants. In true Rocky fashion, he elbowed Richard in the face, threw him out of his car, and the altercation resulted in Richard being fired from the project. Oh no, they had to decide between Richard Gere and Rocky. I wonder how quick that decision was. Number 8, Selma Blair. It's funny that this entry involves Charlie Sheen getting a woman fired when he himself has been fired from so many projects because of, well, several reasons. After being fired from Two and a Half Men, Sheen returned to the acting world, headlining his own show called Anger Management. It premiered in 2012 with cast featuring Hellboy alumni Selma Blair playing his colleague and friend with benefits on the show. However, Sheen's terrible behavior continued to haunt him from his Two and a Half Men days. Blair was very vocal on her problems with Charlie, especially his messy work ethic. Charlie heard and he was having none of that, so he threatened to quit the show if Blair was going to remain a part of the cast. Sheen got his way and Blair was let go after starring in 54 episodes. The show didn't last long though, who would have guessed that a messy actor being the lead was a bad idea? It got cancelled in 2014. Next up, 7, Shanine Doherty. Unfortunately for Shanine Doherty, she gained quite the reputation in Hollywood for being fired due to issues with her co-stars. She may or may not be making another appearance on this list, who knows, guess you'll have to stick around to find out. For the first entry, we're going to look back to the very popular series, Teen Drama 90210, a series following the lives of the Walsh family as they move from Minneapolis to Beverly Hills. Doherty played the character Brenda Walsh, with her character eventually befriending several students at Beverly Hills High, including Donna Martin, played by Tori Spelling. The series was a hit after its initial season, however, with increased popularity came massive egos. Doherty and Spelling started clashing on set constantly, adding additional drama to the production team that really just didn't need to be there. Considering Tori's father, Aaron Spelling, was the producer on the show, it's pretty simple to piece together what happened. Doherty claimed that she was officially let go for having a haircut that messed up the continuity of the show, but a wig could have fixed that, so better believe Tori Spelling told her papa to boot her from the series. Number 6, Edward Norton. As we all know, Edward Norton didn't last long as the Incredible Hulk in the MCU, only being in one movie in 2008. By the way, I've read some of the comments, and no, Edward Norton was not the first person to play the Hulk on screen. The honor goes to Lou Ferrigno and Bill Bixby from the original series, and don't you dare get me started on Eric Bana, looking like he's farting every time he turns into the Hulk. The 2008 film was success, but not a massive box office goat. The studio were at odds, and they wanted to keep using the Hulk and incorporate him into the Avengers, but Edward Norton was becoming increasingly difficult to work with. When he was contacted to keep playing the character, he demanded more money from the studio. However, he was already on thin ice following his time filming The Incredible Hulk. While not some wild on-set meltdown, Norton did make some pretty odd choices. For instance, as part of his contract, he was allowed to rewrite the script as much as he wanted, but it still needed to be approved. So he wrote new scripts over and over again until we got the 2008 Incredible Hulk movie with some of Ed's ideas baked into the final script. Kevin Feige claims that the choice to part ways with Ed was not based on money, but instead on Marvel just wishing to hire an actor that embodies the creative and collaboration side of their talented members. Essentially, he was like, eh, Mark Ruffalo's nicer than you and he doesn't write his scripts, so bye bye. This ended up being a great decision on both parts though, because Mark Ruffalo is fantastic as Bruce Banner and the Hulk and Edward went 
went on to make several high quality films, including a few collaborations with Wes Anderson. Moonrise Kingdom would not have been the same without Edward Norton as Scoutmaster Ward. Number 5, Anne Hathaway. So, a fun fact that I was unaware of until today Anne Hathaway was almost a secondary lead in one of the most universally loved Seth Rogen movies of all time. Knocked Up from 2007 follows Seth Rogen and Katherine Heigl as they prepare for the arrival of an unplanned baby after a one night stand. The cast was packed with stellar comedians like Paul Rudd, Jonah Hill, Leslie Mann, so many more, and the cast almost featured an up and coming actor at the time, Anne Hathaway. Anne is famous these days for roles in movies like Princess Diary, Interstellar, and Ocean's 8. These days, she's considered to be at the top of the A list. In 2013, she even took home her first Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Now, before this, though, she actually agreed to be in Knocked Up because she thought the script was great and that Seth Rogen, you know, is Seth Rogen. You work with him every chance you can. However, she eventually decided not to participate in the film after one issue with the script became cause for concern. The scene in question was one of the final moments in the film, which, for those of you who have seen the movie, know is pretty graphic. The birthing scene in Knocked Up ended up being a combination of Catherine acting and some close up clips of her cookie. Anne read that part and decided that her first role in a major comedy movie should maybe be something else. Although it was confirmed that it was not going to be her bits and bobs on display, she has a no birthday suit clause. It worked out for everyone though, because Catherine did a great job despite hating the set apparently. And Anne Hathaway is one of the biggest movie stars to date, so good for her. Number four, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper is one of the groundbreaking actors and directors from the 1960s and 70s New Hollywood, eventually finding his niche in the early 90s, playing villains in movies like Speed, Waterworld, and the live action Mario Brothers movie where he plays Bowser. Yes, that exists. No, it's not good. So it came as no surprise when he was casted to play Kristoff, the all powerful TV producer controlling Truman Burbank's life in the movie The Truman Show. The cast was incredible and it included Hollywood heavyweight Jim Carrey as the titular Truman. Anyone with a brain cell would have been excited to be a part of this film, still considered to be one of his best dramatic performances. However, two days into filming his scenes for Kristoff, which were only expected to take about 10 days to film, Hopper was unceremoniously let go from the set. Apparently, Dennis had a contract in place with producer Scott Rudden that he would be fired should his work be unsatisfactory. He must have been pretty bad in the role, as the director Peter Weir has been described as extremely reluctant to ever remove an actor from a movie. Reports later surfaced that Hopper was basically half asleep while playing the character, and while Kristoff wasn't written to be like a manic man or anything, he did require some effort to be properly pulled off. Ultimately, Ed Harris stepped in to play the role after production had been desperately trying to replace Dennis to avoid having the film be shut down entirely. Thankfully, that never happened, and The Truman Show has gone on to be one of the most depressingly heartfelt Jim Carrey performances ever. Oh, and Ed actually got nominated for an Oscar, so sorry, Dennis, looks like it was a good move. Number three, Jean Claude Van Damme. The Belgian actor, Jean Claude Van Damme, was just on the verge of coming into his own career as the Muscles from Brussels when he landed a job opposite of Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1987's action flick Predator. This sounded like the perfect casting choice. Jean would have worked alongside the likes of Carl Weathers and Jesse Ventura. While this may have turned out cool, the reality was that Jean wasn't casted to play one of the Marines at all. Instead, he was casted to play the titular Predator himself. The special effects artist behind the project called the experience with Jean as a hilarious comedy of errors, in which no party knew exactly what the other was expecting. Apparently, nobody actually told him that the role was basically just a glorified stuntman. They were prepared to direct him to just hop around like a frog, but Jean was obviously confused and upset with that choice. According to him, he had just gotten off the boat and was under the impression that he was going to be showcasing his martial arts skills to the world, but instead, he was reduced to a massive, slow-moving alien with dreadlocks. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, Van Damme was furious and dispirited about spending the entire movie cooped up in a clunky and often ridiculous looking suit, and he was ultimately fired and replaced with Kevin Peter Hall. The idea that he was just on set being like, I can barely move in this thing, it just, it makes me so happy. Number two, Janet Hubert. Will Smith got his big break in the acting world thanks to the success of the sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel Air. It's a show following Will as the titular prince, living with a wealthy family in Bel Air, surrounded by cousins, uncles, and of course, Aunt Vivian. In season one, Aunt Viv was played by a woman named Janet Hubert Witten, but as a lot of people know, she was recasted after an onset feud with Will Smith went a little bit too far. According to Will, Janet viewed him as an antagonist in her life. She had been in the business for years, and suddenly Will Smith popped into her life, and she had a tinge of jealousy towards him because he 
got into town, got a gig, well, hey, that's what happens when you're good. She was trying to convince the producers to give her character more screen time and allow her to breathe on camera, but they said no because it wasn't the Aunt Viv show. She fought back hard, but it was ultimately decided that she would be asked to sit out the rest of the series and was replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed, who is Aunt Viv. Number one, Thomas Gibson. Thomas made a name for himself, starring as one of the leads of the series Criminal Minds. He was on the show for a few years, and in that time, he made quite a few problems for those unfortunate enough to be staff members of the series. There were a few issues over the years that would have warranted some action, like screaming at producers and writers for not doing a good job. But the incident that got him kicked off of the show for good involved, well, a kick. In 2016, Thomas was swiftly fired from the series after an incident with a writer named Virgil Williams. An internal investigation revealed that Thomas kicked Virgil one day during production of an episode that Gibson was actually directing. And as I said, this isn't the first incident on set that really should have resulted in some kind of punishment because three years earlier in 2013, he pleaded no contest to no no juice related reckless driving after being arrested under suspicion of DUI. And three years before that, he allegedly shoved an assistant director, Ian Wolf, during a late night location scene. The, that led to the studio ordering Gibson to take eight hours of anger management. According to most people on the set, Thomas was a wild card. Some days he was friendly and accommodating, and the next he went ballistic. Number 10, Tom Hardy versus Charlize Theron. Mad Max Fury Road is a forgotten gem in cinema history. It featured little to no CGI despite having some insane visuals, and it also featured some stellar performances from its cast, including Nicholas Holt, Charlize Theron, and Tom Hardy. Charlize and Tom played the main characters, Furiosa and Max, and while their on-screen characters ended up working together in the end, on set there was a very different vibe. Tom had a bad habit of showing up late all the time. Meanwhile, Charlize was a brand new mother who would be there on time every day while her kids were forced to be taken care of by someone else. In a book called Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road, writer Kyle Buchanan shared an instance on set between Charlize and Tom. Everyone was on set at 8 a.m. ready to shoot except for Mr. Hardy. But to make a point, Charlize took her place and stayed there until Tom showed up. Three hours later, she didn't move a muscle, and according to the crew, she was beyond furious. When Tom finally showed up, she asked him how he could be so disrespectful, and said that they should find this CNX next Tuesday $100,000 for every minute that he's held up the crew. Yeah, she didn't say see you next Tuesday, but the word she did say set Tom off. He rushed up to her and pulled out the whole, what'd you say to me? Thing, you know, like, oh, a big tough guy, I can't hear anything. Overall, Charlize felt very threatened by Tom and had to have an assistant follow her around on set as a buffer between the two. When the shoot wrapped, the tension was gone and things seemed to have gotten better, but the difficult shoot combined with the stress of the project is most likely the reason that there was never a Mad Max 2. Number 9, Ryan Gosling versus Rachel McAdams. The Notebook is considered to be one of the greatest romantic movies ever made in Hollywood. Oddly enough, the on-screen couple did not get along at all during the shoot. They would constantly fight on set and seemed to have completely different ideas on how several scenes should be played out. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone who wasn't involved, you know, drama watchers who were sipping their tea. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel be replaced by another actress to read her lines with him. In front of 150 crew members, he claimed that Rachel wasn't giving him anything to work with and the two would constantly yell on set. Their toxic on set feud somehow morphed into a toxic relationship that lasted for two years. Anyone who worked on the set blames them for constant schedule setbacks and creating just an overall difficult work environment. Number eight, LL Cool J versus Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx has been a huge star in the world of Hollywood over the years, working with several acclaimed directors in every genre under the sun, but like most actors, Jamie had to start somewhere. And that somewhere was in the film Any Given Sunday from 1999, alongside Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, and of course, LL Cool J. Cool J and Jamie played teammates in the football-centric flick, and not only do their characters constantly fight on screen, but behind the scenes, they had an actual brawl that ended in Miami County Police being called in. During one scene, the two were scripted to fight and filmed the first two takes as planned. However, some offset beef made its way in front of the camera when Jamie struck Cool J for real, splitting his lip open and an all-out beatdown took place, leaving Jamie unconscious and in the hospital. They had to stop production because they weren't 
weren't sure when Jamie would actually be able to return and film his scenes. When Fox did return to the set, it was with a small crew of friends and his manager. Waiting to greet them was LL Cool J and half of Brooklyn, according to the director, who stated that the tension was only settled after the real life football players that the characters were based on came on set to defuse the situation. Number seven, Ryan Reynolds versus Wesley Snipes. Ryan Reynolds is known for many things. He's got his toe dipped into the world of adult beverages, wireless cell phone coverage, and he's even a soccer coach. Or football for our friends in the UK. One of his most iconic roles as an actor is of course the Merc with the Mouth, Mr. Deadpool himself. However, in 2004, Ryan was a part of a different Marvel movie. As some may know, the original Marvel movie that started this whole live action comic trend was the Blade Trilogy, starring Wesley Snipes as the titular vampire hunter. By the time the third movie of the franchise rolled around, Wesley Snipes was just kind of done with working on set. He hated the way the franchise was turning out, and all of his creative suggestions were quickly shut down. His main problem was the fact that Blade Trinity was written as like a straight up comedy movie when the previous entries were more dark, action based movies, filled with gore and some pretty stellar fight sequences. So when Van Wilder was cast to be his co star, he kind of gave up. He famously refused to film several scenes unless he was allowed to wear his shades on set. Apparently, he was like micro napping during takes because he just didn't care anymore. Ryan played a big part in his difficulty enjoying the shoot. Apparently, he made it his mission to make West. Snap. He'd constantly do bits, push things too far, and just the general Ryan Reynolds chaos that we're all used to at this point. At the end of the day, Blade Trinity ended up burying the franchise and was one of the most chaotic and toxic films ever made in 2004. So, number six, Vin Diesel versus The Rock. Remember, everybody, family. That's it. That's the that's my intro. Dwayne and Vin Diesel met on set of the fifth Fast and Furious movie, Fast Five very creative title. This was Vin Diesel's fifth movie, but it was Dwayne's first, not just in the franchise, but in the acting world in general. At first, everything seemed to be okay with these guys on set. Fast Five made a lot of money, and they asked Dwayne to return for a six and seven. However, something changed in 2016, when in a now deleted post, Dwayne called one of his fellow Cast 7 co-stars a candied bum bum. He didn't say bum bum, but I'm not allowed to say that real word on the internet, so I must speak like a toddler. He actually said a word that rhymes with grass. Rumors began to fly that this was more than likely referring to Vin Diesel. Rumors proven only a week after that post was made. Following the premiere of Fate of the Furious, Johnson posted on Instagram thanking all of his fellow cast members by name, but he left Vin out of the equation. It was later confirmed by Fast and Furious co-star Michelle Rodriguez that there was a massive amount of tension on set of the film. They were bros at first, but as the time went on and the franchise evolved, so did their egos. They fought constantly over who should receive the most screen time and who was the real lead of the franchise. You know, Toxic masculinity and all that. To keep both actors happy, Johnson was given a spin off in which he co starred as the lead alongside Jason Statham, and Vin Diesel was left right where he belongs with his family. I know it's a bad impression, but it's a fun word to say in his voice. Number five, Bill Murray versus Lucy Liu. Does anybody else just get the most hardcore Charlie's Angels flashbacks when they see these two together? Huh? No? Eh? Fair. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was a massive success when it was released, starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. The movie was filled with action, a little bit of comedy, and one of the strangest performances ever delivered by Crispin Glover. Seriously, that guy needs help. One interesting addition to the cast was the inclusion of Ghostbusters alumni Bill Murray as the man behind the microphone, Mr. Bosley. Apparently, the set was anything but a comedy after Bill found out a scene had been rewritten without his knowledge. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and the situation surrounding Bill's outburst. Apparently, Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be reshot for the movie. But instead of using a stand-in, it was decided that the scene could be filmed without Murray's character being involved. So it went on without him. When he returned to find that the change had been made while he was gone, he was furious and reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At first, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her. She didn't write the scene, she wasn't the director, so she asked if Bill was talking to her specifically, which apparently sent him into a full-blown meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior on set, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy is proud for speaking her mind despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time, and is very glad that Bill's career seems to have suffered for it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior. We'll save that for another time. Number 4. Will Smith vs. Janet Hubert Will Smith got his big break in the acting
acting world thanks to his successful time on the hit sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The show followed Will as the titular prince, living with his wealthy family in Bel Air, surrounded by cousins, uncles, and of course, Aunt Viv. In season one, Aunt Viv was played by a woman named Janet Hubert Witten, who, as many know, was recasted after an onset feud with Will Smith just went a little bit too far. According to Will, Janet viewed him as the antagonist of her life. She had been in the business for years when suddenly this man popped into her life, and she held a tinge of jealousy towards Will as he just walked into town and he got a gig. Well, that's what happens when you're good at your job, Janet. She was trying to convince the producers to give her character more screen time and allow her to breathe on camera but they said no because it was not the Aunt Viv show. She fought back hard but it was ultimately decided that she would be asked to sit out for the rest of the series and be replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed who is the Aunt Viv that everybody knows and loves. Number 3. Tom Hardy versus Shia LaBeouf. Making a return on this list is Mr. Tom Hardy, but this time it's with Shia. This was an onset feud that was innocent from the perspective of the actors, but not the people who were making their movie. In 2012, Shia and Tom starred in a period piece crime drama called Lawless. It was a pretty solid movie featuring stellar performances from both of its leading men. In 2019, on an episode of the popular talk show Hot Ones, Shia addressed the rumors that he had knocked out his on-screen partner Tom during the shoot. According to Shia, the two were closer than people think and acted more like college buddies than enemies. Shia claims that the two would wrestle a lot on set and that it would sometimes distract people from their work. The rumor that he knocked Tom out was actually started by Tom after he fell down the stairs one night and apparently he was getting ready for his role as Bane in Christopher Nolan's third Batman movie at the time and Shia claims that the main reason he wanted people to think he was in a fight was, again, big tough guy. Their feud may have been innocent between themselves but to everyone on the outside, Tom Hardy was about to pile drive Shia LaBeouf every five minutes. Number two, Ray Fisher versus Joss Whedon. Ray played a major role in the 2017 DC movie Justice League as Cyborg. Not only was this the first live action iteration of the character for film, but he was also the first black superhero in a leading role in DC. According to Fisher, he was mindful of this and he delivered the best performance that he could, and honestly, it was a great performance. There have been way worse actors involved with DC, and Cyborg was one of the best parts of the 2017 version. Now, I keep saying that because as some may not know, the original director of the movie, Zack Snyder, was forced to drop out of the shoot midway through production due to a personal tragedy. The studio decided to bring in Avengers director Joss Whedon to finish the project, and at first he was just supposed to direct the movie, but he ended up rewriting most of the script and reshooting several of the scenes already finished by Zack. This is where the tension started. Joss did not appreciate any outside input on his script, and Ray was a very vocal performer who wanted to stick to the original vision that Zack Snyder had. A vision that we actually got to see in 2021 thanks to the Snyder cut of the film being released. It's two more hours, but it's way better. Ray claimed that Joss was not only dismissive towards his ideas, but that he was an absolute monster to work with. Following the release of the film, Fisher voiced his complaints to DC and Warner Brothers, who opened a brief investigation into the situation, but quickly dismissed the case, claiming that there was insufficient evidence to prove he was telling the truth. Thankfully, several of his co-stars and crew members backed up those claims that Joss was a very angry, racist, and just manipulative boss, creating an extremely toxic environment on set. The backlash from fans, combined with the hashtag Snyder Cut, allowed Warner Brothers to finish Zack's original vision for the project and release a four-hour Snyder Cut in 2021. Not only is Cyborg's storyline much better in this version, but the project overall is considered to be one of the best DC movies ever made. And at number one, James Franco versus Tyrese Gibson. So this feud was brought to my attention by a fellow host here at the studio, and I had never actually heard of this movie before today, but but once I found out it was between James Franco and Tyrese, oh, we had to include it on this list. These two start opposite each other in a 2005 dramatic piece called Annopolis. The story follows Franco's character wanting to attend the titular Naval Academy and entering into a boxing tournament against some of the Navy's best and brightest. His main opponent is Tyrese Gibson. Throughout the majority of the film, James and Tyrese would regularly practice the choreography for the final fight of the film. Now, method acting is one thing. 
when you just pretend to be someone else all the time and that's it. But it's different when you're literally punching your co-star for real. Instead of the normal film choreography allowing actors to fake hit each other, Franco was throwing real punches without warning. Gibson tried to be civil at first and asked him to lighten up. Franco ignored him and just continued to box his heart out. When asked about the incident in interviews, Franco defended himself by saying that he was aware that he made the set difficult at times and claimed to be so wrapped up in his role that he probably wasn't as friendly as he could be. Gibson, however, holds a massive grudge towards Franco, claiming that he would never step foot in the same room as this man ever again. Good news for Tyrese, James got cancelled and Fast 11's coming soon. At number 10 we have Christian Bale. Christian is a versatile actor, physically and skill-wise. He's able to shrink and grow his physique seemingly at will. He's played everything from a skinny substance addict to Batman. In 2008, Christian starred in the third film of the Terminator franchise, Terminator Salvation. And while he was filming, a scene director of photography, Shane Hurl, Bet apparently moved into Christian's eyesight. This caused Christian to snap out of character and into defense mode. The now infamous audio clip of Christian screaming at Shane to make matters worse, anyone trying to calm Christian down were met with an equally swift verbal lashing. While the cinematographer was just checking a light to make sure it was in the right place, aka doing his job, Bill made it his mission to share his intense feelings with the entire crew. When the audio leaked, Bale apologized for his actions and told the world to praise the crew for their work. While the movie turned out okay, visually speaking, the project as a whole is remembered as the worst entry in the Terminator franchise to date. At number 9 we have Joaquin Phoenix. We understand a dedication to one's craft and Joaquin Phoenix is a prime example. Joaquin's acting career has been going steady since he first appeared in the 1989 comedy Parenthood when he was in his mid-teens. While he's seen as one of the greatest actors in recent history, his reputation on set has been tarnished thanks to a little freak out while filming the 2018 solo flick Joker. He appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote the shoot when Jimmy played a behind the scenes clip of Joaquin getting loud and angry at a man named Larry and the constant whispering behind the cameras before dropping a few f-bombs and storming off set. When the cameras came back to the studio, Joaquin was frozen in shock, clearly not expecting the clip to ever see the light of day. He explained that Larry was a cinematographer who had teased Joaquin off set earlier that day, calling him a diva. He then explained that there's a lot of pressure on set, especially in a closed space like the apartment from the scene. He apologized to the audience for having to see him behave in such a manner, which was met with applause. At the end of the day, he's a performer and no harm came from the outburst. If Larry's cool with it, so are we. At number 8 we have Ewan McGregor. The last thing any actor needs while filming on location is something from the paparazzi coming up and demanding their attention. One such incident took place with Obi-Wan Kenobi himself. Ewan was on location in New York filming a scene for the Netflix series Halston when he was spotted approaching photographer Steve Sands for being too chatty during a take. McGregor then let out some choice words before snapping back into character and filming a scene with a co-star Kelly Bishop. Not only did nobody on set blame him at all, the cameraman actually apologized and they were able to laugh the whole thing off. I've seen what this guy can do with a lightsaber and none of us should be getting on his bad side. At number 7 we have Tom Cruise. Now we know Tom Cruise is insane, there's no denying that. And he may be one of Hollywood's biggest and brightest in his early days, but his career and skills as, as an actor have been slowly going downhill since he divorced Katie Holmes. To prove his insanity and rage, let's talk about an incident that occurred on his last Mission Impossible movie. An audio clip that was released of Cruise berating several crew members with intense anger. The crew in question were accused of not following safety protocols that were in place at the time. In the rant, Tom was heard swearing and screaming about the rules and how if he wants something to happen, it will happen. The crew are essentially his minions who must do their master's bidding. The rant went viral when Cruz defended the rant rather than apologize for it, claiming that he said what he said and the stakes were at an all time high. While this may have happened at a time when Hollywood was shut down and many productions were on hold, that's no excuse to harass the people trying to make you look good. At number 6 we have Clayne Crawford. When actors portray their best friends on screen, you expect the friendship to seep through them in real life, right? Well, wrong. Clayne Crawford and comedian Damon Wayans started working together on a series remake of the hit action film franchise Lethal Weapon in 2016, and the show was well received. The pair seemed to have good chemistry on camera and made us want to see more of their friendship. Behind the scenes, however, these two could not stand each other. The set was plied with multiple altercations that bogged down production to the point where Clayne's character was written out of the show and replaced with Dukes of Hazard star Sean William Scott. Following the recasting announcement on set, audio was leaked of the pair bickering like an old married couple just moments before snapping into character for their scene. The clip clearly shows Clayne trying to egg Damon on, and this clip was recorded only a few days following a stunt gone wrong, Clayne directed, and that left Damon with a nasty head wound. The show did great without him, but was cancelled after only four short seasons. We need more of Sean William Scott in the world, bring it back. Number 5 we have Orson Welles. Orson was the man behind what many film schools consider the greatest piece of cinematography ever put to film, Citizen Kane. I've never seen it so I can't comment any further. Orson did a lot of voiceover work back in the day and had one particular 
particularly terrible time trying to record a radio ad for the food company Findus in 1970. Behind the scenes, Otto shows Orson going on a rant after being asked to emphasize the words in and beef, before calling the man running the show some choice words and telling him to let Orson hear what he's supposed to sound like. He complains about the content of the script after fumbling the name of a Norwegian fisherman. He just kind of mumbles his way to the end of the script before claiming the content was unoriginal and uninspiring. The guy was reading an ad that contained the word beef, sorry if nobody found that inspirational. At number 4 we have Casey Kasim. Casey's face is certainly one you do not know, but his voice certainly is. Casey voiced the original portrayal of the popular cartoon character Shaggy in the mystery series Scooby Doo. During his time outside of the recording booth, Casey actually used to run a daytime radio show. The content of one broadcast in particular sparked a very heated reaction from Casey. In 1985 he was asked to read a dedication request about a fan's dog that had passed away. The dedication read, recently there was a passing in our family, he was a little dog named Snuggles. Casey was audibly upset as the statement was meant to follow a relatively happy song. He was set into a tangent in which he made it clear that this kind of thing had kept happening to him for a while now, not holding back a single thought on the matter. Following the incident, the producers started to be more careful with the content they would allow Casey to read. At number 3 we have Henry Winkler. Henry Winkler, best known for his role as the Fonz on Happy Days, was set to direct Tom Hanks and his much loved buddy cop movie Turner and Hooch. Unfortunately, these two had a pretty rough history together before that though. The Fonz had actually fought with Hanks in character on set of Happy Days for one episode a few years prior. It would appear that Tom wishes he could fight Henry for real though, as rumor has it the two of them didn't get along at all. So much so that a few days into shooting Turner and Hooch with Henry behind the wheel, Hanks ordered Winkler to be removed from set and replaced as director. That's the kind of power Tom Hank wields, he could just walk on set and be like, no. Not only did Tom complain that Henry's behavior as director was annoying, he complained that Henry was just overall bad at his job. It would take double the average time to reset a shot on set, he had minimal control over his actors, and was apparently very frustrated with having a dog on set. Like, did he even read the script before he took the gig? The dog is a national treasure. What makes this firing even more tragic is the fact that when Winkler was delivered the news, one of the film's producers ripped Henry's contract up right in front of his face. Over the years, when asked about the incident, Henry denies that he ever had any kind of personal or professional issues with Tom, but like Tom's never given us a reason to think he would lie about something like that. What would he have to gain? At number 2 we have Eric Stoltz. Let's talk a bit about the 1985 comedy sci-fi Back to the Future. I loved this movie growing up. The story followed Marty McFly, a high school student who was accidentally sent back to 1955 in a dime machine invented by his close friend and scientist Dr. Emmett Brown, played by Christopher Lloyd, and is forced to get his future parents together before he disappears from existence. Whoever pitched this movie must have been lacking sleep. The film went on to spawn two sequels, creating what is considered to be the greatest film trilogy of all time. While Michael J. Fox may have played the iconic Marty McFly, he was not the first actor to don the puffy vest on set. A young man named Eric Stoltz was initially cast to play the role. You may not recognize Eric's face as his most famous character was drenched in prosthetics and makeup playing the character of Roy L. Dennis in the film Mask as a man with several facial and skull deformities. He was nearly halfway through shooting the flick when the news came that he was going to be replaced with Michael J. Fox. Fox was the director Robert Zemeck's first choice but was initially unable to sign onto the project due to his prior commitment to the sitcom Family Ties. Uh, eventually though, the two studios were able to find a way to work out his schedule and allow him to film both projects simultaneously. This is why you may notice a majority of Marty's scenes that take place outside are at night as it was the only time he could film for a good 60% of the shoot. Robert wanted Eric out from the beginning, however his portrayal of the character was far more intense than the writers had in mind. And not to mention Eric read the end of the movie as tragedy instead of a happy ending. Spoiler alert, at the end of the first film, Marty returns to 1985 after successfully getting his parents together, but instead of being poor and depressed, the family is now thriving and successful. Somehow Eric took this as Marty becoming an outsider in the world. His intensity combined with the depressing performance of the finale got him kicked off the shoot only minutes after Fox was available. And at number one we have Lindsay Lohan. She got her start acting at the age of just three, starring in over 60 TV spots and commercials for brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O. She had her big break when Disney cast her to play two roles in the classic family comedy The Parent Trap. She played twin sisters Haley Parker and Annie James, who randomly meet at summer camp and discover their parents split them up when they were babies following a divorce. Her career only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday with Jamie Lee Curtis and Mean Girl as the main character Katie Heron. Her spot on this list, however, comes from the last roles before her hiatus in the 2013 film The Canyons, starring alongside adult film star James Dean in the leading role. Her reputation was tarnished enough by 2013, but it was made even worse after an audio clip was released of Lohan berating her co-star on set for not performing a line properly. Lindsay was annoyed and took several shots at Dean, telling him to do his damn job. According to James, Lohan was aggressive towards him, 
him from the very beginning, apparently being upset that he was taking time off from adult films to attempt a career in the real world. Starting off our list today at number 10, we have Megan Fox. Back in 2009, Megan Fox would come out to call Michael Bay out for his unprofessional behavior behind the scenes for the Transformer movie franchise, which isn't really shocking as after they kicked Megan out of the films, they did have one of the Transformers call her an itch for no reason. In an interview with the Los Angeles Times, Megan would say, Michael wanted to create this insane, infamous madman reputation and he ultimately was a nightmare to work for. She also went on to say, but when you get him away from the set and he's not in director mode, I kind of really enjoy his personality because he's so awkward, so hopelessly awkward. He has no social skills at all. It's endearing to watch him. He's so vulnerable and fragile in real life and then on set he's a tyrant. In response, Michael then made a letter and enlisted his crew as the people behind it on his page where they claim that Megan was the one who was actually really difficult to work with. Number nine. Ray Fisher. Joss Whedon has been accused multiple times on set for misconduct. In 2020, Ray Fisher, who starred in Justice League, wrote in a tweet that Joss's behavior during the filming of the movie was gross, abusive, unprofessional, and completely unacceptable. Not only did he use his social media, but he also used a series of interviews to bring forward some serious allegations of racist behavior and cover up at Warner Brothers. Josh, who played Cyborg in the 2017 film, is fed up with the unrelenting focus of executives at Warner Film Studios and then at its parent company Warner Media and how they handled allegations that he and others brought to their attention. Right after Ray exposed his mistreatment, Catherine Forrest, a former federal judge who conducted the Warner Media probe, told THR in a statement that in the interviews of more than 80 witnesses, she found no credible support for claims of racism or racial insensitivity. A Warner Media spokesperson then noted that the company made extraordinary efforts to accommodate Mr. Fisher's concerns about the investigation to ensure its fullness and fairness, but the investigation definitely wasn't fair as his allegations were truly just swept under the rug instead of being heard. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number eight, we have Charisma Carpenter. Showrunner produced and director Josh Whedon now has a long line of celebrities who have come forward to accuse him of abuse. One of the most disturbing accounts comes from former Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel star Charisma Carpenter, who played Cordelia Chase in Joss Buffy's universe. Charisma only felt inspired to speak up about the mistreatment she received after years of remaining silent because she saw the Justice League actor Ray Fisher tweet about the abusive work environment Josh allegedly fostered on the set of the film. In a statement to her Twitter account in February 2021, Charisma called Josh casually cruel while citing on-set examples like allegedly calling her fat when she was four months pregnant or she she was forced to report to work at 1 a.m. against medical advice. She then claimed that Josh asked her inappropriate questions about her pregnancy, and shortly after she gave birth, Josh fired her, and she would know all that promise and joy sucked right out of new motherhood. And Josh was the vampire. While he found his misconduct amusing, it only served to intensify my performance, anxiety, disempower me, and alienate me from my peers. Number seven, Judy Garland. The original Dorothy of Oz had a difficult life after Judy Garland passed away in 1969. Later, it would be said that her life was full of many hardships and she unfortunately suffered her whole life. It all began when the actor was 13 years old and signed a contract with MGM Studios. During this time, executives at the studio allegedly created body images for her by forcing her not to eat and made her develop a resilience on substances. And they even reportedly made unwanted advancements towards her. By the age of 19, Judy then got married for the first time and would go on to have five husbands in total. And one was allegedly abusive. The most shocking story, however, comes from her most famous film. Judy's ex-husband, Sid Luff, who served as her manager and whom she married from 1952 to 1965, had a memoir published in 2017 where he claimed that the actors who played the Munctions in The Wizard of Oz made unwanted advancements towards Judy on set and they would make Judy's life miserable on set by putting their hands under her dress. With the Munctions being 40 or more years old, Sid would say they thought they could get away with anything because they were so small. 
small. Number six, Amy Adams. Director David O. Russell has alleged documented history of aggressive behavior on set. Like the time he got into a physical altercation with George Clooney, to the time he called Lily Tomlin a see you next Tuesday while filming the 2004 I Heart Hucklebees. But the most disturbing allegation was when David continuously mistreated Amy Adams on the set of the 2013 American Hustle movie. In emails leaked the following year through WikiLeaks, journalist Jonathan Alter wrote to his brother in law, Sony Entertainment CEO and chair Michael Yachton, that the new story stories of Russell's abuse and lunatic behavior are extreme even by Hollywood standards before claiming that he abused Amy Adams and that even her co-star Christian Bale had to get in his face and yell at him to stop acting like an a-hole. Amy would then confirm in an interview with GQ in 2016 that David did mistreat her on set when she said he did make me cry. He was hard on me, that's for sure. It was a lot. I was really just devastated on set. Number five, Hannah Waddingham. Battles may have been in common in the film on Games of Thrones, but Hannah Waddingham, who played Septa Nella on the popular fantasy drama from 2015 to 2016, never expected to literally be waterboarded during a day's work. In season six on the show, Cersei Lannister pays Septa back for torturing her by having Septa captured and tortured too. Hannah then told Collider that Anella was supposed to be taken advantage of, but decision makers made a last minute change while she was flying to the film, and her wardrobe suddenly required her in a wetsuit. Instead of using visual effects to simulate the act of torture, Hannah claims that she was literally waterboarded, and she said, And there I was, strapped to a wooden table with proper big straps for 10 hours and definitely other than childbirth, it was the worst day of my life. The 10 hour day of traumatic filming was not without actual consequences as Hannah would then add the situation definitely caused her to have claustrophobia when she's around water. Number four, Sophia Bush. When Sophia Bush was playing Erin Lindsay on NBC's Chicago PD for four seasons before she quit the show in 2017, in the middle of her seven year contract, she then would later explain to Dak Shepard on the Armchair Expert podcast that her body could not handle the physically demanding conditions she was put in on set. In the interview, she would say, I quit because I've been so programmed to be a good girl and to be a workhorse and to be a tugboat that I've always prioritized hugging the ship for the crew. For the show, for the group ahead of my own health, the reality was that my body was falling apart because I was really, really unhappy. She then went on to claim that while the show was being filmed in Chicago, creative decision makers made the cast film outside in weather conditions that were 62 degrees below freezing because the snow looked cool on camera. Sophia also then went on to note that she endured being abused at work because she didn't want to jeopardize her job for crew members and that the culture protected what was happening on set. Bush alleged that she gave her bosses a whole season to fix the issues that she knew she had been working in the conditions in Chicago, and when they didn't comply, she decided it would just be best to exit the show altogether. Number three, Elliot Page. Back in 2017, Elliot Page would take to his Facebook page to say that Brett Ratner outed him as gay during the filming of the X-Men The Last Stand. Page went on to say, I was a young adult who had not come out yet to myself. I knew I was gay, but did not know, so to speak. I felt violated when this happened. He outed me with no regard for my well-being, in an act we all recognize as homophobic. In addition, Ratner also told a woman on set you should F her to make her realize she's gay. Page then went on to say Ratner's comments replayed in his mind many times over the years as he's encountered homophobia and coped with feeling of reluctance and uncertainty about the industry and his future in it. Just a short time before Elliot went public with his story, six women accused Ratner of a range of unwanted advances in misconduct. Number two, Shelley Duvall. Director Stanley Kubrick is notorious for running a demanding set. However, did you know that The Shining broke the Guinness World Record for most retakes for one scene with dialogue after it took them 148 takes to finish it? In 2021, The Hollywood Reporter would then ask former Hollywood star Shelley Duvall if Stanley treated her viciously on set and she would tell the outlet, he's got that streak in him. 
He definitely has that, but I think mostly because people have been that way to him at some point in the past. While Shelly did tell the Rolling Stone Stanley was warm and friendly towards her, Shelly's own daughter Vivian captured Shelly's physical and emotional exhaustion while filming The Shining in a behind scenes documentary which featured the actor lying down on the floor in a complete state of exhaustion. Shelly once also told Roger Ebert that going through the day after day of excruciating work was almost unbearable. Angelica Houston, who lived with the film star Jack Nicholson, would also go on to note that Shelley was having a difficult time with the film's emotional content before saying, When I saw her during those days, she seemed generally a bit tortured, shook up. I don't think anyone was particularly careful of her. And coming in at number one, we have Debbie Reynolds. Debbie Reynolds got her star making role playing Kathy in 1950s 2 Singing in the Rain. Debbie was much like her character who was trying to break out into the movie business as she was not as experienced as her co-stars Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. In fact, Debbie had no prior dance training before the production began. But Kelly, who co-directed the film, was apparently not a patient teacher and he mistreated Debbie on set. Debbie would open up about her mistreatment in her unsync memoir in 2013 where she would say, My feet were bleeding from all that dancing and when I pointed out, Gene says, clean it up. He was very sentimental like that. Debbie would also claim that Gene was a cruel task maker when she noted that he came to rehearsals and criticized everything she did and never gave her a single word of encouragement. Later for his part, Kelly did eventually admit that he did mistreat his young co-star badly and he said, I wasn't really nice to Debbie. I'm surprised she still speaks to me. But Gene's onset behavior went beyond meanness as he also shoved his tongue down her throat in a particular scene. At number 10, Kanye West. Most people see Kanye West as a little too extra. He's caused scandals like his VMA interruption with Taylor Swift, his comments about George W. Bush, as well as many other instances that have just rubbed people the wrong way. To add to that, he's reportedly very hard to work with. During filming of Anchorman 2, Kanye came on set for a brief appearance in the film and though he played a small part, he left a big impression on the cast and crew and it wasn't positive. Apparently after Kanye wrapped on set, he refused to leave. He could have just gone home after he finished his scenes, but he decided to stick around. That's fine if you want to stay and watch other people's performances, but that's not exactly what Kanye did. Instead, he hung around set blasting music so loudly that it disrupted filming. People tried to get him to just leave, but he wouldn't. I think it's safe to say that if a third Anchorman movie were to happen, Kanye just would not be welcomed back. At number 9, Leah Michelle. Leah Michelle was exposed in 2020 for her Hollywood mean streak and for her terrible on-set behavior. This all came out following a tweet from former Glee co-star Samantha Ware where she let the world know how horrible it was to work with Leah. The actress is now described as quote, callous, rude, mean, and even a diva. But following Samantha's exposure of the Broadway star, other people have come forward with their own testimonies regarding Leah and her mean streak. There have been stories of Leah's microaggressions, but also stories of her spitting in craft service food that she doesn't like, refusing to work with people because they didn't know her middle name, requesting reshoots because she didn't like her costume, disrespecting other castmates, and having crew members apologize on her behalf, and so many other frustrating tidbits that just really show how rude and entitled she's been known to be. No one wants to work with her after learning about how much of a nightmare she can be on set. Before we carry on talking about the celebrities who are just the worst people to work with on set, why not take a moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Julia Roberts. Even though Julia Roberts seems like a nice person, it turns out that she's a nightmare on set. Ironically, she's almost always cast as nice and endearing characters, but there's seemingly much more to Julia than meets the eye. Apparently, she's known to have a pretty bad attitude on set, which can make working with her an unpleasant experience. In 1991, on the set of the Peter Pan film Hook by Steven Spielberg, Julia earned the on-set nickname Tinker Hell as a play on her character Tinkerbell. She earned this moniker based on the production staff's perception of the actress. Apparently, during filming, she would constantly show up to set late, and even when she was on set, she would lock herself in her trailer for hours on end. 
She also reportedly treated people badly and she would never apologize for her mean actions or behavior. Julia was truly the opposite of the pixie she was playing. At number 7, Mike Myers. Does anyone else remember the Cat in the Hat live action film from 2003 starring Mike Myers? I certainly do. It was very cringy, but in a good way, since I was a kid back then and I found everything unbelievably hilarious. I enjoyed that movie as a kid, but one person who didn't enjoy it was the Cat in the Hat himself, Mike Myers. After the success of Austin Powers, Mike was set to bump up his comedy and star in a production based on one of his old characters. But before that was all carried out, the actor and the studio got into some debates and there was legal trouble. It was all just unnecessary drama. Well, they both ended up reaching an agreement and it obligated Mike to star in the Cat in the Hat movie. He never wanted to sign up for that and he really made it known how badly he didn't want to be there. According to people who worked with him on set during filming of the Cat in the Hat, Mike was very rude and dismissive and he refused to talk to anyone. He became a hermit and a diva apparently and this whole experience and subsequent film were all so bad that Dr. Seuss's widow said that she would never allow Hollywood to make another movie based on one of Seuss's books again. At number 6, Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts has had quite a few on-set feuds with co-stars. She's had drama with Gabri Sidibe, Ariana Grande, and Evan Peters, but the biggest feud that she's had was with Leah Michelle on the set of Screen Queens. According to sources, Emma Roberts and Leah Michelle had one strong attribute in common, and that was the fact that they were both divas, so while they were working together, they butt heads with each other quite often. Apparently, their fighting got so bad while filming, actress Jamie Lee Curtis had to step in and mediate the hostile situation between Emma and Leah because she was so fed up with their constant bickering while they were trying to work. It was also reported that the actresses would constantly have mean girl moments, making rude and catty comments towards each other almost daily. Rumors of this feuding between them were pretty common in entertainment news while Scream Queens was still in production, showing that things never really died down between the two actresses. It seemed like Emma just caused a heck of a lot of drama with a lot of people on set. At number 5, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf has really been going through it in Hollywood. He kind of has a bad reputation now because of the conflicts that he's been in, the latest of which got him fired from a movie. Because of his bad attitude and clashes on set, the actor was fired by Olivia Wilde from the upcoming film Don't Worry Darling. It was announced in late fall of 2020 that Harry Styles would be replacing Shia in the film, and now we know that it was due to Shia's alleged bad behavior as people have cited that the actor was quote, not an easy guy to work with. It was alleged that there was some kind of conflict between him and Olivia Wilde as well, and the fact that other cast and crew members didn't like working with him, Shia was let go. Getting fired is always a negative thing, but in Hollywood, when a lot of your work involves other relationships with other actors and having connections, having a bad experience that was enough to get you fired can ultimately burn that bridge and result in you having less work. At number 4, Ben Stiller. A lot of people think of Ben Stiller as this super funny guy in Hollywood, but just because someone seems great in the public eye doesn't mean that's how they really are behind closed doors. It seems as though Ben Stiller is a nightmare in disguise because he's a tough guy to work with and he causes a lot of trouble on set. People who know or have worked with Ben in the past have exposed some of his bad behavior on set and it's kind of shocking. According to those who worked with him on the set of the film Tropic Thunder, he was very controlling and mean to just about everyone there. He even reportedly had a meltdown on set when someone brought him his Diet Coke and it didn't have exactly two ice cubes in it. He even had someone fired because they didn't put enough sugar in his coffee. On top of that, Ben even forced his assistant to stand out in the parking lot in his designated parking space, even though it already had a sign saying that it was reserved. And to make matters even more hectic, Ben also freaked out on a female assistant he had, going so far as to refuse to come back to set until she was replaced by a male assistant. If all of this madness happened on just one film set, who knows what other shenanigans have gone on elsewhere with him. At number 3, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase is known for being in National Lampoon and the show Community, but is also known around Hollywood as being kind of a jerk and starting drama with the people that he works with. There are a bunch of articles, books, and interviews of people talking about their experiences with the actor and how mean he can be. There are even stories in the book Live from New York that detail the times Chase has been mean to staff, writers, interns, and other hosts. Will Ferrell and Bill Murray are among those who have taken a disliking to Chase because of the way that he's treated others. Will Ferrell has said that he doesn't like Chevy because of the way that he treats some female staff members. And Bill Murray and Chevy Chase even got into a brawl backstage of SNL back in the day where they said some pretty hurtful things to each other because they were kind of comedy rivals on the show. 
Chevy just doesn't get along with everyone and he said it's because his fame went to his head, but something tells me that's not the only reason why he starts drama. At number two, Bill Murray. Bill Murray already has a pretty bad reputation in Hollywood for his poor on-set behavior, so it's no surprise to me to find out that he's had some serious drama with one of his castmates on the set of Charlie's Angels. While filming the movie, Bill Murray was said to have antagonized actress Lucy Liu. When watching the film, you'd think that they were all good friends and on good terms, but in reality, that was quite the opposite. The film set was sort of a hostile environment that caused Bill to take a disliking towards Lucy. Turns out Bill would insult Lucy's talent and acting ability and on one occasion even said, quote, I get why you're here, you've got talent, but what in the hell are you doing here? You can't act. Apparently the harassment and bullying got so bad at one point that Lucy tried throwing punches at Bill during one scene because his insults got so bad. This antagonizing went on for the entire duration of the production and Bill kept on berating Lucy about her presence on set and calling her unprofessional as well. This drama was just so unnecessary. And finally, at number one, Sharon Osbourne. Talk show host Sharon Osbourne faced a lot of backlash last year after making comments about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Sharon and her former co-host Cheryl Underwood got into a pretty heated argument surrounding Piers Morgan's remarks on Meghan Markle. During this feud, Sharon backed up Pierce's comment about Meghan Markle's mental health, and this really frustrated a lot of people because many felt as though what was being said was going a little too far. As a result of the remarks that Sharon made, she was called a racist, and a number of other accusations came out about how she's used various slurs in the past when talking about her other co-hosts on the show. As a result of this, the network that they worked for launched an internal investigation to look into the allegations against Sharon, and that ended with Sharon being let go from the show. In audio obtained by the UK news outlet The Sun, Tom Cruise can be heard berating two crew members after seeing them in close proximity to one another. Apparently, while on set, a distance of three meters had been put into effect for COVID safety, but the pair were breaking this mandate. Tom is currently filming Mission Impossible 7, which is where this meltdown took place. Cruise, who is a producer on the big budget action film, starts off the clip by yelling that they are the gold standard. He continues by telling them that studio executives are back in Hollywood making movies right now because of their caution throughout this pandemic. The two crew members that Tom was screaming at apparently were less than a meter away from each other and standing at a computer screen. Approximately 50 staff members at the Warner Bros. studio were left in shock by Tom's angry outbursts. That's 50 people standing around letting this actor and producer scream at them all for two minutes straight. I totally get why Tom Cruise was so angry here though. He was furious that after all of his efforts to bring back filming, two crew members were about to ruin it all for them. Cruz also said that he was offering no apologies for his rant because people's livelihoods are at stake. In the clip, he can be overheard saying, You can tell it to the people that are losing their effing homes because our industry is shut down. It's not going to put food on their table or pay for their college education. That's what I sleep with every night, the future of this effing industry. So I'm sorry I'm beyond your apologies. He then went on to say, We are not shutting this effing movie down. If I see it again, you're effing gone. The latest installment into the Mission Impossible franchise has already had some complications due to COVID. Apparently, the movie is earning its name throughout the process for the seventh film. In October, Tom Cruise had to hold crisis talks with the film's director after 12 people on set in Italy tested positive. Additionally, upwards of 150 background extras were turned away because the local health officials had still not tracked down the people on the crew that had tested positive. So as to not put more people at risk, filming was halted and everything was delayed even more. So you gotta imagine that Tom Cruise is just wanting to finish this film so that he can get this nightmare over with. With. According to The Sun, after Cruz returned to the UK two weeks ago, he personally tried to ensure that there would be no more delays. We're guessing this is a promise that he made to the studios back in Hollywood. Several times he has been photographed wearing a mask while on set, and obviously this audio recording is an example that he is cracking down on rule breakers. He apparently even personally paid £500,000 for an old cruise ship that the cast and crew could isolate on, which is a little ironic considering that some of the biggest COVID hotspots to begin with were cruise ships. Hopefully this one was properly scrubbed down before they boarded to quarantine, but nonetheless, that was a nice gesture of him. A source close to the set of Mission Impossible told The Sun that Tom has really been taking it upon himself, along with the health and safety department, to try and force these safety precautions. Because the last thing that he wants is for filming to be stopped again. The source also went on to say, He does daily rounds to make sure that everything is set up appropriately, that people are behaving and working as safely as they can. He is very proactive when it comes to safety. Adding, Everyone was wearing masks. It was purely that these people were standing under a meter away from each other. It isn't known whether he saw those guys breaking the rules 
themselves before, or whether this was the straw that broke the camel's back. The source also added that people make mistakes and slip up, but that Tom was just on it every time. Now I know the source could not confirm as to whether or not this was the crew member's first warning, but judging off of what Tom said to them in the last bit of that clip, they sound like repeat offenders. I mean, no one goes from zero to a hundred like that unless this is the second or third time that you've told them to be socially distanced. In the last part of that clip, Tom says, all the way down the line, and I care about you guys, but if you're not going to help me, you're gone, okay? Do you see that stick? How many meters is that? When people are standing around a effing computer and hanging out around there, what are you doing? And if they don't comply, then send their names to Matt Spooner. That's it. Now it's important to note that as per usual, Twitter was divided by this incident. Some praised Tom Cruise for militantly enforcing COVID safety precautions, while others argued that no one should speak like this to anyone ever for any reason. However, those people are not producers on a massive franchise that is employing literally thousands of people. When you actually have some skin in the game, it will make you do some wild things, like yell at people for not being socially distanced. People were calling him a narcissist and egomaniac, but in reality, it's quite the opposite. Everything he is saying comes back to him not wanting people to get sick or lose their jobs, or worse, both. To me, it sounds like a boss who is being responsible and holding his staff accountable for breaking the rules that puts everything they've worked so hard for at jeopardy. Starting off our list at number 10 is Phil Robertson. You will know him from appearing on the TV series Duck Dynasty. Back in 2013, he was fired from the show. They called it an indefinite hiatus, if we're being technical, after he made some incredibly offensive remarks about homosexuality. His remarks stem from his religious views, where he openly talks about how being a homosexual is considered a sin and anyone who is will not be in the kingdom of God. His words, not mine. He went on to say that being homosexual isn't right or natural. Some of his comments are too inappropriate to share, but one of them was referencing how he just doesn't get that someone would be attracted to a man's anus. Yes, he went there. After the comments were made, A&E Network released the following statement. I quote, We are extremely disappointed to have read Phil Robertson's comments in GQ, which are based on his own personal beliefs and are not reflected in the series Duck Dynasty. His personal views in no way reflect those of A&E Networks, who have always been strong supporters and champions of the LGBT community. He was fired from the show, but apparently fans didn't agree with it and demanded that he come back to the show. He ended up only being fired for nine days before they agreed to let him back on. So I guess they are just more forgiving than some. In spot number nine is Nicolette Sheridan, known as one of the divas on the hit TV series Desperate Housewives. Although you could probably consider all of them to be divas, Nicolette might have been the biggest one of them all, according to the media. Reports say she caught constantly clashed with the show creator Mark Cherry, which led her to being dismissed from the show unexpectedly one day. Her character was killed off in April 2009 during one of the episodes, and Nicolette filed a lawsuit against Cherry and Touchstone Television for wrongful termination. That is when she began to arrow a bunch of dirty laundry, making claims that Cherry hit her in the head and that ABC fired her in retaliation for reporting the assault. Cherry admitted to touching her, but said it was only a demonstration on how to enact a comedic moment during a scene. The case went to trial and the director stated that her character's death had been in the show's plan for months. He went on to say that her termination was because of differences and her unprofessional behavior. The trial ended with a mistrial and the appeals were rejected. The actress was left out of a job with no compensation. Talk about a lose-lose situation. Sliding into number 8, we have Thomas Gibson. The talented actor is known for many of his roles, but mainly for playing Aaron Hotchner in CBS series Criminal Minds. The actor had a huge reputation built from being on the show for so many seasons, but he ruined it all by one mistake. The actor was fired after having an altercation on set with the executive producer, Virgil Williams. However, according to TMZ, Gibson's termination was a long time coming. Apparently, they had several issues before that regarding the actor's anger management problems. He was first ordered to attend anger management classes after he punched an assistant director in the face back in 2010. Sources say Gibson was, and I quote, aggressive and verbally abusive for years on the set of Criminal Minds. Then, six years later, in 2016, he lashed out again and kicked the producer Williams after a heated argument over the script. They sent him home immediately, originally just for a two-week suspension, but the producers and network decided it was best to terminate him altogether, so they did. He was never brought back to set. At number seven is Taylor Mumpson. You would have once recognized 
recognized her as one of the main stars on the hit TV series Gossip Girl. However, you probably wouldn't recognize her today as the cute bubbly blonde because she has completely changed her look and behaviors. She is now the lead singer of the rock band The Pretty Reckless. She appeared on the TV show Gossip Girl for four seasons, but in the fourth season, she only appeared in four episodes, and people were starting to notice that her screen time had gone down significantly. It was then announced that the actress would be scheduled for an indefinite hiatus, aka they were letting her go. Reports were made saying that the producers struggled working with her and her off screen behaviors. One of them said during an interview that she had, I quote, unreliable and erratic behavior. It didn't help that her look also began to stray away from the girly innocent teen Jenny, which she played on the show. She was no longer a regular cast member of the fourth season, and she later told Elle magazine in 2011 that she quit acting altogether so that she could focus on her music career. So I guess it just all worked out for the better. Taking over spot number six is Paula Dean. She is the queen of southern cooking and was one of the leading ladies on the Food Network. Unfortunately, she was dropped from the network back in 2013 after making racial comments. It all started when she didn't show up for an interview on the Today Show without any explanation as to why. We later found out, along with the Today Show, through online videos where the actress and cook begged her family and fans to forgive her for using racist language. Everyone was confused as hell until it was later explained that Paula was actually in a lawsuit with a former employee. In the documents, which ended up being released, she admitted to having using racial slurs, tolerated racial jokes, and condoned pornography in the workplace. The Food Network did not elaborate on its reasons for dropping her, they only stated that she would not be renewing her contract. Talk about a recipe for disaster. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Shannon Doherty. The actress has a very successful career which is surprising since she managed to get fired from two different TV shows, Beverly Hills 90210 and Charmed. Reports say that the actress was fired from Charmed after an ongoing feud with co-star Alyssa Milano. According to the Huffington Post, Shannon told Entertainment Tonight, I quote, There was too much drama on the set and not enough passion for the work. None of this was all that surprising because she already had feuding issues on Beverly Hills 90210 which ended up having her fired once again for getting into an altercation on set. Her co-star Tori Spelling opened up in 2015 about what really happened. Turns out Shannon and her other co-star Jenny Garth were always at each other's throats. Ugh, girls. The tension came to a breaking point on set one day when the crew had to physically pull the two girls apart because they were in a physical altercation. Tori Spelling went to her dad, who was the producer of the show, and had Shannon fired immediately. Tori said it wasn't easy having her friend fired, but it was something that just needed to happen. Alright guys, at number 4 is Robert Downey Jr. That is right, our beloved Iron Man wasn't always some big influential hero. The good news is he was never fired from Marvel, and that's really all that matters, am I right? However, it turns out that the actor was a mess before he became Iron Man, to a point where he was fired from set on the TV series called Ali McBeal. The series ran from 1997 to 2002, and during that time he was struggling with a severe drug addiction. During that timeline, he found himself in mugshots and courtrooms on multiple different occasions. It wasn't until 2001 when he was arrested once again for suspicion of being under the influence of illegal substances. It was this arrest that had him kicked off the show. He was let go immediately and written off of the show with no future plans to bring his character back. The producer of the show, David E. Kelly, made a statement following the arrest and said that the season would wrap without Downey Jr. in it. The producer refused to give a reason for the actor's sudden departure, but Downey later opened up about it with the truth. They rewrote the ending to the show, which didn't include his character, plain and simple. Since then, he has turned his whole life and career around, clearly. And I think it's safe to say that he has gone like above and beyond. Here we are number 3 with the former Nickelodeon star Jeanette McCurdy. She's known for her role on iCarly and then its spin off series called Sam and Cat. You can imagine it probably doesn't take much to get booted from a network like Nickelodeon seeing as you have to be on your best behavior and more at all times. Well this actress was until some of her personal off screen behaviors ended up getting leaked to the public. And by behaviors I mean nude photos. Well not totally nude, she did have underwear on. The 21 year old was mortified after pictures of her emerged all over the internet, which she claimed she had only sent to her ex-boyfriend. She had recently dissed him publicly saying that he was a bad kisser, and then the photos leaked not very long after, so it really doesn't take a genius to piece two and two together. After the images surfaced, it was announced that the show would not be renewing a contract with the actress, or at all for that matter. Which was surprising seeing as the first series had a huge success co-starring the one and only Ariana Grande. Jeanette went on to tweet out comments about Nickelodeon not treating her properly, which is why she ended up skipping the kids 
Women's Choice Awards, even though she was nominated for Favorite TV Actress. The network denied all of her allegations and won't speak about the leaked images. Because realistically, that is probably a very awkward conversation for a network like Nickelodeon. At number two is Columbus Shore. The actor was living the dream, starring on the hit TV show Scandal, where he played Harrison Wright on the series from 2012 to 2014. Although he was talented, he was let go because of his drug addiction and different issues with the law. He was first arrested for felony battery after a brawl took place at a bar, and then also got arrested for a domestic violence incident involving his wife. TMZ reported that his wife got a restraining order against him after she claimed he put a knife to her throat, threatening to kill her. Not only did the actor have legal issues, Issues, but he also had trouble quitting his cocaine addiction. When it came to be too much, the show decided to let him go on set one day and ended up killing his character off of the show. Back in 2014, Short opened up about his addiction during an interview with Access Hollywood Live, saying, and I quote, I'll be candid, I was struggling with drugs, I had a lot on my plate, and you know, I was using unhealthy ways to kind of self medicate and deal with a lot of the heavy duty stuff in my life. When they asked him what type of drugs he was abusing, his response was, I was doing cocaine and drinking a lot. He has since openly apologized to everyone involved with the show and also to all of his fans. Taking the number one spot on our list is Drake. Don't forget you guys, before he was a rapper, he was just another actor in Toronto starring on the TV series Degrassi The Next Generation. He took on the role of Jimmy in the series from the years 2001 to 2009, but while he was on the show, he was also working on music on the side. Turns out that is actually the reason that he was eventually let go from the series. During an interview with W Magazine, he said, I quote, that was part of the reason I was kicked off the show. Back then, I would spend a full day on set and then go to the studio to make music until 4 or 5 am. I'd sleep in my dressing room and then be in front of the cameras again by 9 am. Eventually, they realized I was juggling two professions and told me I had to choose. I chose this life. So basically, you're telling me that it was like a Troy Bolton situation where you have to pick between music and your other passion. They ended up letting him go from the show, but he has no hard feelings about it, seeing as he is now one of the most successful artists in Hollywood. Starting off the list at number 10 is Bruce Willis, who happened to get fired from the movie The Expendables 3. We all found out about this through Twitter back in 2013 when the cast was being announced for the movie. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Willis had been offered $3 million for four days of shooting. Problems began when he started demanding a pay raise to $4 million for the four days, so basically $1 million per day. That's when Sylvester Stallone, the co-founder of The Expendables, let the actor go immediately. Not only did he fire him, but he also took it to Twitter to tweeting out, greedy and lazy, a sure formula for career failure. Within 72 hours of Bruce being let go from the movie, he was replaced by the one and only Harrison Ford. Fans found out once again through Sylvester's Twitter. He tweeted out, Willis out, Harrison Ford in. Great news, been waiting years for this. People were shocked that he would be let go and replaced so quickly, but I mean, can you really blame them? I don't think anyone in this entire world deserves to be paid one million dollars a day. That is absurd. At number nine is Lisa Kudrow, who was fired from the hit TV show Frasier. That's right, before the actress found fame as Phoebe Buffay on Friends, she appeared in the pilot for Frasier. She was originally cast to play Frasier's producer named Roz, but she was fired just after one episode and was replaced with Perry Gilpin. In 2017, the casting director Jeff Greenberg has opened up about the recasting and admitted that it was a horrible idea for him to make the switch. He said, Kelsey Grammer came in and read with five or six of them, and our two favorites were Lisa Kudrow and Perry Gilpin. We tested them at NBC and they chose Lisa. She was great. However, when they showed the pilot to a test audience, things started to turn away from Lisa's favor. The casting director said they believed Lisa's version of the character wasn't well received. But at the end of the day, it worked out the best for Lisa, who ended up becoming very successful not too long after. Sliding to the number eight spot is Lindsay Lohan, who was let go from the movie The Other Side back in 2010. Before that, her last appearance on the big screen was in her 2007 flick called I Know Who Killed Me. She was trying to make her comeback and she was thrilled to be involved in the other side. However, sources say she was let go because she wasn't bankable. The actress was making headlines and it wasn't the good kind of publicity. At the time, the writer and director David Michaels told TMZ, our team simply chose to move on from Lindsay and will be announcing a replacement soon. Fans were shocked, but Lindsay wasn't all that surprised. In the past, she has 
spoken openly about her issues in Hollywood and admitted that it's hard for people to give her a chance. She said, There is not much I can do about the fact that I've become kind of a tabloid obsession. I can't change that. And yes, the websites, the gossip pages, and all of that stuff have hurt my career. They're like the burn books of Hollywood. Good news is, MTV has recently given her a chance, and the actress launched her own MTV show this year called Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club, which had a successful first season. Taking our number seven spot is Christian Bale, who is fired from American Psycho. I know you're probably confused, so give me a chance to explain. It was a very weird twist of events. Here's what happened Bale was originally offered the role of Patrick Bateman, but the studio later decided to hire Leonardo DiCaprio instead. Lionsgate announced DiCaprio's casting at the Cannes Film Festival in May of 1998. Bale was completely thrown off by the news because he was hired for the role, but not properly fired. But their new hire ended up screwing them over because DiCaprio wasn't pleased with the movie and had some issues with the script and plot. So over some time, he decided to bail on the film and signed onto a different project. Luckily, Bale was forgiving and the role landed back in his lap. So basically, I'm not sure what list he should be on because he was basically fired through a public announcement, replaced, rehired, and replaced Leo with himself, who was the original one to be hired. So let's just move on. In at number six is Janet Hubert, who was fired from the hit TV show Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The ongoing feud between the actress and her co-star Will Smith has made headlines on many occasions. The two of them worked on the show together for years. Janet played his aunt Viv in the first three seasons. By the end of the third season, she was fired and replaced with Daphne Maxwell Reed, who took on the role in the fourth, fifth, and sixth season. The show portrayed a very loving and close family bond, but apparently the off-screen feud between the two of them became a big problem. Smith openly talks about the feud and told Jet Magazine, and I quote, I can say straight up that Janet Hubert wanted the show to be called the Aunt Viv of Bel Air. The Aunt Viv of Bel Air show. No matter what, to her, I'm just the Antichrist. He went on to explain that she was constantly demanding things that were just unreasonable. Janet responded to his comments in the interview and stated, He has got me fired from the show and now he's trying to snatch my career away from me. To this day, the two stars have never resolved their issues. She didn't even show up for the reunion, but no one was really surprised by it. Some of the cast members shared photos on Instagram though, and you can't help but wonder if she misses being a part of the hilarious family that we all came to love. Halfway through the list at number five is Lori Petty, who was tossed from the movie Demolition Man and then quickly replaced. Back in the early 90s, Lori Petty was ready for a breakout in her career. She was part of some of the era's most memorable movies like A League of Their Own, Free Willy, Point Break, and Tank Girl. So she was pretty stoked when she was cast in the 1997 action film Demolition Man, starring alongside Sylvester Stallone. But that excitement didn't last long as Lori wasn't a fan of her character and got into arguments with the producer Joe Silver over the writing of the script. Eventually, the arguments were just too much and she was fired from the role. Not too long after, Sandra Bullock was brought in for the role. Alright guys, at number 4 is James Remar who is fired from Aliens. The actor really shouldn't need an introduction since he is such a legend in the acting industry, but I'll give him one anyways. He's been acting for over 30 years, building an impressive resume to say the least, taking on roles in Transformers, Dark of the Moon, Pineapple Express, Django Unchained, and many more. Which is why it was super confusing when he was suddenly let go from Aliens. It's not a subject that gets brought up much in documentaries about the film, and the cast and crew rarely mention it during interviews. Remar's first claim when it happened was that he had urgent matters at home that tore him away from the shoot. It wasn't until 2014 that he opened up and told the real story. Turns out he was fired because he was charged with drug possession. The actor said, I had a terrible drug problem. I was initially cast as Corporal Hicks and I was fired after a few weeks of filming because I got busted for a possession of drugs. Not long after he left, Michael Bean replaced him for the part. Remar has no problem talking about it now and says that he got through his horrible drug habit. Here we are at number 3 with Sylvester Stallone who was axed from Beverly Hills Cop back in 1984. Not long after his third Rocky and his first Rambo movies, he was set out to play Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop. It was in development with Paramount and the actor was offered the role to which he accepted. The role was a Detroit police detective which ended up being played by Eddie Murphy instead. Why? Because apparently Stallone wasn't a huge fan of the script. During interviews, the actor was first to admit that he didn't think he wanted to do the film after all because he thought the script would affect his tough guy image. So the actor insisted on rewriting the role the way he wanted it even though he was told not to. He said, Ron told me don't change it, but I took the script and rewrote it as kind of a compromise where the guy was action oriented but he also had a wry sense of humor. The producers were not pleased and immediately rejected his new script. That's when he told them that he wouldn't do the movie without the original script so they pulled the plug and let the actor go. Thanks to him, Eddie Murphy had a breakthrough in his acting career for 
were taking on the role with the original script. At number two is Roseanne Barr, who was fired from her own show, Roseanne. How does that even happen? You have to do something pretty serious to be fired from your own show. And well, she did. Her show was the most popular new TV show in America, and it got canceled in just a matter of hours, all because of a few derogatory tweets. Roseanne went on some sort of Twitter rant where she tweeted out racist and derogatory tweets. Some of them were aimed directly at Barack Obama's aide, Valerie Jarrett, comparing her to Planet of the Apes and the Islamic Brotherhood. Fans were outraged, and so was everyone involved in her show. When ABC saw her overnight tweets the next day, the key executives were having conference calls with the president of Disney slash ABC Group, the CEO of Disney, and her boss Ben Sherwood. Roseanne ended up tweeting out an apology and said she would be leaving Twitter, however she never actually left. Not long after, ABC confirmed the cancellation of the show. Realistically, the show couldn't go on without her, and they said that there was no way of coming back from this. The ABC executive announced that more than 200 people involved in the show also lost their jobs due to the cancellation. Barr tweeted out a response apology and said, Don't feel sorry for me guys, I just want to apologize to the hundreds of people and wonderful writers and talented actors who lost their jobs on my show due to my stupid tweet. Well, at least she apologized. Taking our number one spot is Adam Sandler, who was fired from SNL back in 1995. The actor has always said that he has no idea why he was fired from the show, but he wasn't the only one. When it first happened, he called his friend Chris Farley, who also starred on SNL with him, and he told Adam that he was fired too. The reasoning has always been a mystery, but now it's something the actor can poke fun at. Just a few weeks ago, after 24 years, he made his way back on SNL and sang a comedic song about how he was fired from the show. He started out with a monologue about how happy he was to be back on the show and how he is thrilled to bring his wife and children with him. He said, My daughter asked me if this was the greatest dad, then why did you leave? Well, honey, there's a reason. That's when he breaks into a song called Fired by NBC. One of his final lines of the song is, I was fired, yeah, I was fired. NBC said I was done, but then I made more than $4 billion at the box office, so I guess you could say I won. He continues laughing at his own jokes, and the audience laughed along with him. But like, I actually want to know why he was fired in the first place. 